Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to look at simple linear regression models in Excel. I'll go over how to conduct those models and how to interpret the output that you would get in Excel. And it turns out it's actually quite straightforward once you've gone through it a couple of times and once you know how it works. I'm also going to talk about the basics of simple linear regressions just so that we're all on the same page about what exactly it is that we're doing in Excel. Now when I'm doing this, I'll use an example called the single index model. The single index model is a way to get a stock's alpha and a stock's beta. And it basically posits that the stock return is going to be driven by the returns on the broader market index. And the beta here represents the sensitivity and responsiveness of those stock returns to market index returns. The alpha represents the average overperformance or underperformance of that stock over the time period. And the residuals, of course, represent any random movements that might arise for that stock on any given day. In any case, the single index model is just going to be a simple linear regression. And the process we use here is going to be transportable to any other simple linear regression that you ultimately need to do in Excel. Let's start by briefly going over what the regression model might actually look like. So here, for example, we might have a model where we've got a dependent variable, y. And y is determined or deemed to be a function of a regressor, being x. x is also called our independent variable. And here what you have is you might have a table of various values. You'll have y1, y2, all the way down to yn. Similarly, you have x1, x2, all the way down to xn. Importantly, you'll have n observations for both y and for x. So the two need to line up here. And you'll typically set them up in a table fashion like that. You're also going to have a residual term, and I'll get to the exact definition and meaning of that in just one second. Now you'll notice here that we have a table of y's and a table of x's. You can also put this into vector notation then, where we have a vector of y's and we also have a vector of x's. So when we have these regressions, we have a few things we need to deal with. Firstly, we've got our dependent variable. So the dependent variable here is y and our x is our regressor. These are the various data points that we can observe. Now, given these data points, we're able to estimate some things. We can estimate alpha and we can estimate beta. Alpha and beta are our regression coefficients. Alpha is an intercept and beta is a slope coefficient, i.e. we have a simple linear regression here. This is linear. So A is the intercept in our line and B is the slope of that line. Now, when we run a regression, we estimate alpha and we estimate beta, which means that when we're running a regression, we can predict what Y would be in an on average. And we can do this by using our predicted A and our predicted B. So we're using our coefficients that we've generated. Now the residual here represents the difference between the observed value of Y and what you would predict given the regression model. So it's a residual. On average, those residuals will equal zero by definition. I.e. the average residual or the expected value of the residuals is equal to zero. And that's simply by construction. So that's effectively what we have as our regression model. I'm going to focus on how to estimate this in Excel rather than the econometrics behind it. However, it's important to know what the model might look like in order for us to do this. So that we can start looking at this in Excel, let's think of a basic example. A basic example might be what's called the single index model. The single index model posits that our returns on a stock are going to be a function of the returns on the market index i.e. there's a single factor that determines stock returns on average, hence the name single index model. And the output from the single index model gives us an alpha for the stock, representing the extent to which it has outperformed or underperformed the market index. And we've also got residuals, representing the random movements of that stock in any given day. And then the beta represents the slope or the sensitivity and responsiveness of the stock's returns to the returns on the market. So as one example, we might have a firm like Qantas, which is an airline based out of Australia, Qantas will have stock returns, and those stock returns might be deemed to be a function of the returns on the market index. For example, the Australian Securities Exchange. We can go and download data on this, and then we can run that regression. And I'm going to use data from Qantas and from the ASX in order for us to be able to run a regression and then interpret that regression in Excel. Here we are in Excel. And what I have here is a set of data on which we're going to be able to do a simple linear regression. So here in this first column, column A, I have a series of dates. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to regress the stock returns for a given stock here. Here, this is Qantas, which is listed on the Australian Stock Exchange onto a market index. In this case, it's the ASX 
S&P 200, which is effectively the index for the largest 200 stocks on the Australian Stock Exchange. Now here I have the daily returns for each of these companies, which are derived from daily prices, which are reported in Yahoo Finance. It's relatively simple and also free data that you're able to access. Now in order to do a regression in Excel, we've really got two ways to do it. The first and really simple way is to use the slope and the intercept function. The intercept function basically gives you the intercept from a simple linear regression. So the way this works is you go intercept, and that's basically going to bring up the intercept function, relatively straightforward. Then you need to use your known y's and your known x's. Here the known y's are going to be your dependent variable. So here it's going to be Qantas as my dependent variable. So I select the known y's by selecting that whole column. I also then need to select my known x's, which are going to be the regressors for my regression. These are the things that I think might influence Qantas's stock returns. Here, that's going to be the returns on the S&P ASX 200 index. So I'll select that whole column, and then I'll close parentheses. This will then give me the intercept for this model. This intercept is also known as the alpha in this model, and is going to tell me to what extent, if at all, has Qantas outperformed or underperformed the broader market index. The alpha on average is going to tend toward zero. We can then get the regression beta. The beta is going to be the slope for our regression. Excel has a built-in function to do this as well. It's called the slope function, rather unsurprisingly. So I type in slope here, select my known y's, again, my column of Qantas returns, select my known x's, again here, my column of uh, stock return or stock index returns, and then I close parentheses, and this will give me my regression beta. Here, the beta is 1.21 approximately which is basically telling me that when the market index goes up about 1%, Qantas will go up about 1.2% on average. Conversely, when the market goes down 1.2% or 1% rather, Qantas would go down on average 1.2%. It's basically telling me the sensitivity and responsiveness of Qantas's returns to the returns on the market index. So that's the most straightforward way if you want to just get the alpha and the beta. However, if you want to get additional regression information, for example, things like the R squared, you would need to use the data analysis package. To do that, you would go to data, and then you need to go to data analysis over in the analyze section of the data tab. And under data analysis, you'll be able to do the regression. If you do not see data analysis, you can get that relatively easily. You would go to file, and then after you go to file, you would go down to more or options, depending on which version of Excel that you have. So you would click more and then options. And then ultimately what you would come to is add-ins under the set of option, options. Add-ins is going to enable you to add the data analysis section. Then at the very bottom, you'll see manage. Under manage, you can click go when you've selected Excel add-ins. After you select go, you can get the analysis tool packs and the solver tool packs, which you would want to add here if you do not have those already. I've already installed these, so I will just cancel out of it. So to do the regression, I go to data analysis, and then I'll need to select regression. So you need to scroll down and find regression. It is in alphabetical order. You then click OK. You would then need to select your input Y range and your input X range. So as before, our input Y range is the returns on Qantas, just our column of returns here. The input X range is, as before, going to be our column of returns on the market index. Again, much the same as with the slope and the intercept function. You then have a few other options that you can choose. You can force the intercept to be zero, which we will not do, because that can lead to errors with your slope coefficient. You can also select confidence intervals, which we don't really need to do at the moment. And if your table has labels in it, you would select labels here. My table, or at least the data I selected, did not include labels, so I'll leave this unselected. You can then select where you want the output to be, either in a new uh, set of ranges in this current worksheet, a new worksheet, or a new workbook. I'll just leave it in a new worksheet, which I'll go over to. You can then ask Excel to give you residuals, or standardized residuals, and residual plots and line fit plots. And you can also ask Excel to give you normality plots. Now, I won't really focus on these, but I'll select them just for the sake of completeness so you can see what they look like. I'll then click OK. This is then going to give me my regression output in a separate worksheet. 
So here we have a few things we'll want to look at. In the first bit at the very top, we have our regression statistics. The regression statistics give you some information that you're going to be able to interpret. For example, R squared and the like. The ANOVA table I generally do not pay terribly much attention to, but the F statistic is useful to have. The F statistic tells you the joint significance of all of your regressors. In the bottom table here, we have the coefficients and the statistical significance for our intercept and here our slope term. Because we only have one regressor here, there's only one slope. However, if you have a multi, multiple regression, you're going to end up with multiple coefficients here. So let's go through some of the interpretation of this. So firstly, focusing on the regression statistics, we can look at our R squared. The R squared basically is telling us how much of the variance or movement in our dependent variable is explained by the changes in our regressor. Here, the adjusted R squared is what we really want to focus on. The adjusted R squared penalizes a model for having too many regressors. Here, the adjusted R squared is around 34%. What this tells us is around 34% of the variance in our dependent variable. Here, quantity of stock returns is explained by the returns on our market index, telling us that other things might also explain it. Now, these would factor into a multi-factor model, such as, for example, a three-factor model or a four-factor model, which I won't address right now. In our ANOVA table, the main one I'll focus on is the F statistic. Like I've indicated, that tells us the joint significance of all of our aggressors. Here you have the F statistic itself and a measure of its statistical significance. Here, with the statistical significance it's telling us, the F statistic is highly statistically significant in this particular case. In our bottom table here of our regression coefficients, you can see the intercept, which again, as before, was very close to zero, which is what you would expect, and the slope coefficient. Again, approximately 1.2, telling us, as I indicated, that if the market index moves 1%, the quantus stock return will move 1.2% on average. In the p-value column here, this is telling us, as unsurprisingly, the p-value of our coefficients. This gives us an idea of how statistically significant they are. The lower the p-value, the more significant that coefficient is. So our intercept here has a high p-value. The p-value will range between 0 and 1. Here it's 0.64, which tells us we cannot tell that the intercept is statistically different from 0. The slope coefficient has an extremely low p-value. Excel, of course, truncates some really low decimal numbers here. So what this is telling us is the p-value of the slope is very close to zero. You can also see this with the standard error and the t-start, which are also telling you some similar things when you interpret both of those together. Effectively, our p-value here is telling us that our slope coefficient is highly statistically significant. So that is effectively a good sign if you're wanting to look for a slope that is statistically different from zero. Obviously, this is not telling us if the slope is different from one, Rather, it tells us if the slope is different from zero, which may or may not be what you're interested in looking at. We also told Excel to give us the residuals. So we have done here the residuals, both in terms of the ordinary residuals and the standardized residuals. Now, these can be used to determine things such as what's called idiosyncratic volatility. I won't really focus on that at the moment, but what the idiosyncratic volatility is, is it is the standard deviation of all of our residuals you rather unsurprisingly have a residual for every single observation that we have in our set of data. Here we had around 194 days of data here, so hence why we've got that many residuals being reported to us. So that's effectively what we have at this point. And you're also given predicted values, i.e. probability predicted values, or probability determined predicted values from our regression, which is basically telling us the expected value of the return on our variable here being Qantas, given the returns that were reported for the market index. Now, finally, we have various plots here, which one can interpret if one wants. There's a normal probability plot, there's an X variable one line fit plot, and then we have a residual plot. Now, the residual plot looks roughly what we would want. With the residual plot, basically we have a random scatter of dots here, which is what you would want from a residual plot. Basically, the residuals are randomly scattered. If they're giving you a weird, uh, a weird pattern, that tells you there could be an issue with your regression model. In terms of the X variable line fit plot, here you have what looks like a line going in this slope. 
So here, the predicted y will be having the slope of our regression model, i.e. the slope here would be 1.2. The y observed variables are in the blue dots. Now, the blue dots here are forming an approximate line, which our regression is estimating. In the normal probability plots, this S shape is what you would expect if the, plot, if the residuals rather were normally distributed. So this is a line, if this is a plot rather, that you would expect given the data that we have. So that's how you would go through doing a regression in Excel. It is relatively straightforward to get a simple linear regression and to interpret the output. And you can do it either in the shortcut method where you just get the slope and the intercept, or you could do it in the long form method in which you use the data analysis section of Excel. In any case, I hope this has given you a good idea of how to run a regression in Excel, how to interpret the output, and what types of things Excel will give you when you run a simple linear regression. So thanks so much for tuning in, and I hope to see you for additional videos.